down. I'm joking, of course. We've got some fantastic tracks. It's a great yeah. chat, and we've got Carl That's with me, great Steve. Chat. Steve. I'm Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9. There he is indeed, with him, Steve Merchant. And, uh, Carl Pilkinson, of course. Say hello, Carl. Alright. Yeah, nice. And, uh, you, you say you read- The what? beginning of a radio show is very much your wares, your shop window, laying out your stall. I don't think you can choose a better track than The Only Ones, Another Girl on the Planet. I'd love to hear it. One of my favourite intros, that. Amazing. Oh, that was dangerous, because I once heard on Capital Radio, um, this has got to be the greatest rock intro of all time, and they played Money for Nothing by Dire Straits. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I can just imagine them putting their head down. I remember a friend of mine at, uh, when I was at school, he, he just bought a car, and he took me outside to show off the stereo system, Money for Nothing. Just, to, just, <laughs> really? to, he just played that. I've never heard the song before. Just played that for its entire four or five minute duration. It is a to good show song the, for uh, the sound system. Yeah, it's a good song for showing off intros <laughs> and sound yeah, systems. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You said you were driving along earlier. You saw someone. Uh, are you? Are you? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. It was a, one of those zooped up sort of um, uh, sporty saloons. Nice. You know, the big about like a Monday or something. Those big. And uh, it was blaring out. And the bloke in it was sort of like I could tell he was twenty four, but already going bald. <laughs> Yeah. For, from, like, obviously his estate agency job, not <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's made a bit of money and he's got- and the service was ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, so loud and it was going through Covent Garden. He was playing Snow in Forma. <laughs> oh! I just- do people remember In Forma by Snow? It was a I big tune in my I don't know. It's, it's great. Yeah, I, I always enjoy can it. Can I bring that in next week? Can we play no. Snow next week? Well, you can play a tiny little bit tiny of little bit of Snow. Yeah. In Forma. Do you remember Snow, Carl? Yeah, yeah, loved it. it. Yeah, big tune. Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. Oh, yeah. did you? Big tune for yeah. the 90s. Happy song, isn't it? Rick, you were yeah. saying that you've turned over a new leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Is that in all aspects of your life, or is that just in your broadcasting career? Because oh, the reason I bring that up is because do you want to describe what you were eating just now when we came in? Because well, you're a forty, you're a forty-year-old man. You've got a little bit of weight, so presumably yeah. you're watching what you eat. Well, no, but it sounded exotic. I went Can into I, a cafe and, and I didn't. I, they didn't have a cheese sandwich. Right. And I. Uh, can I describe what it looked like to me? <laughs> right, it looked to me like a big slab of cheese. You've just got them to just <laughs> cut off a big block of cheese, like the size of a CD case, or yeah. like one of those double albums, uh, right, of yeah. cheese, right? <laughs> and just lightly melt that for me so yeah. it drips over my hand and it yeah. gets really greasy in the bag. But yeah. just lay some strips of bacon on the top. Yeah, but listen, you've embarrassed Is that yourself. What it was? No, it's a croque monsieur, so it's French. It's a what? A croque monsieur. A croque monsieur. Yeah, and so I got. I, I thought, I've Whoa. never heard of a croque monsieur. You're having a let's see, you've embarrassed yourself. Is that how it's pronounced, or yeah. is it croque monsieur? Oh! <laughs> eh? <laughs> eh? You not... didn't expect me to be bringing out the French. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> tu aimes la musique pop? Oui, je t'aime la musique pop. La plume de ma tante. Où est le syndicat d'initiative? That means my aunt's pen. So, what was it then? A croc- it was a croc- Yeah, and it, and it was just too greasy. It yeah. was just too- and it was all wobbly. I- 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 well, I like toast, I like it to be crisp. Sure. It's the thing with like- what-, what? this is rubbish. Play Coldplay. <laughs> Yeah. Coldplay. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad, yeah. yeah. Not bad. Nice, not, nice little track. Yeah. Well, Steve, um, we've been away now for what, 12, 13, 14 weeks? Is that really? Yeah. Why? Wow. I've been looking forward to coming back. It's great, it's great to be back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's we've cool. had uh, some 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 laughs, some tears in in the interim. I imagine. Yeah, uh, we've had a few ups and downs. Obviously, been working on uh, the TV show, The Office, BAFTA winning, <laughs> uh, coming soon. Thank you too. But uh, so, Rick, 30, I just, make, I just need to mention something quickly to you. Um, Go on. When did I last see you? I saw you yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. Because um, we went up to Edinburgh yesterday. We were we were very nicely uh, invited to go and talk at the uh, Edinburgh International Television Festival. It was quite yeah. a big deal. We went up there and we were interviewed. And uh, Ricky chose to go on the train because it takes like four hours. Uh, it four and a half hours or something on the train. Yeah. But it's quite leisurely. It's quite sort yeah. of gentlemanly thing to do. Yeah. I opted to go for the plane option yeah. and fly up there. More modern. <laughs> exactly. And uh, and they they bankrolled that. They paid for it all. And yeah. so that was all not very nice. And uh, as I recall, when I last saw you, uh, we got a cab, didn't we? And, and you asked if you could get the cab to drop you off at the train station. Yeah. And then it took me on to the airport. Yeah. Um, did I? Now that was that was before. I, the last time I saw you was before I got to the airport and missed my flight, wasn't it? Because really? I, because I had to drop you off That's in the centre of town. Yeah, no, that that was so that was just before I had to pay one hundred and sixty five pounds to upgrade to another How ticket. How did you not tell me that in the last hour? One hundred and sixty five pounds, Ricky. I had to pay because we dropped you off at the train station. So I mean, do you want to go halves on that, or what do you want? How do you want to deal with that? How do you want to sort that whole that whole mess? Out? Why were you late? Why Why was I late? Because yeah. we dropped you off in the centre of Edinburgh, and yeah, you know how hard it is to get out of Edinburgh in rush hour traffic. But it was only it was only three minutes away, so you no, missed it anyway. No, because if we'd gone the other direction, it would have been twenty minutes. It took me like an hour to get to the tr- to the airport, and I got there, and the plane had already left, <laughs> and the cabbie was just laughing. 
He was saying we're never gonna make it. He goes, you were a religious man, you better start praying. I thought he was being facetious. He was absolutely right. A hundred and sixty-five pounds. Hold on, why didn't he tell you that when he, when, when he picked up a well, quarter past wonder. four? It makes you wonder. So obviously li I'm a little bit annoyed. Cause you know I'm not a man who likes to sort of spend unnecessarily. But wait, but well, this is not my fault. Cause you were there when we made that decision. I didn't impose this on you. We both decided that might be- It's both our fault. I mean it's no, no one's fault. It's both our fault. Is that <laughs> fair? That's all I wanted to hear. It's both our fault. Therefore it's both our financial obligation. No. 165 pounds. Just split that in half. Write a check, Rick. Write a check. It's fine. I'll <laughs> say, I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, phone in. Uh, I think everyone. This. This You're is. You're clearly obvious. irresponsible. No, of course I'm not. If you if you share a cab and then one person's lucky enough to not be late and one person is unlucky enough and that's what it is. Bad luck. I don't think you share the obligation. The but phone, it's, just, a it's a moral dilemma. With this isn't it? But it's more than that, though, isn't Go it? On, because what? let's be honest. What? Um, even if you had known that it, I was gonna get there late. You'd have wanted me to hang around just so you weren't left around waiting for a train on no, the road. No, because I got Because you get bored sitting no, there. So there. you'd have wanted me to at least got in that car I got there you. way too early. I right. actually got there about, I was there about 30 minutes oh, so early. you made it fine then, that was- Well, exactly. Fun. So, I mean, I did, I, I, I sacrificed <laughs> me hanging around for half an hour so you could get it at quarter past four. And the other thing is this, you were gonna get it at quarter past four anyway. Yeah, but, but I would- if I'd gone the other direction and not dropped you off in the centre, I would have been there in well, time. Well, would we? Would we? Well, Is that yes. true? Well, only God knows. Well, and the cabbie. <laughs> <laughs> what I mentioned it to. <laughs> so, uh, I'll tell you what'll cheer you up. I'll tell you what's better than 80 quid. I'll tell you what's better than- shall I? <laughs> Go on. Uh, music. What, are you paying the whole 165? <laughs> Listen, look, I've brought in a little track here, um, mm -hmm. Bruce Springsteen, off the Tunnel Love album, and uh, I know you're a Springsteen fan. I was we're, 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 we should just qualify this, because a lot of people who listen to XFM are obviously a bit edgy about Springsteen. They yeah. just think he's this old, kind of ludicrous 80s rocker, the bandana, you know, the, the flying the flag, which he no, never that, really was. No, that was Bon Jovi. Exactly. Don't, you don't confuse confused Bon Jovi. But seriously, no, do you know what I mean? He did write some great music in the 70s, yeah. and he's just got a little bit kind of pompous in the 80s, but he still turned out uh, some amazing tunes, one of which I imagine is this one, Rick. This one's called Brilliant Disguise. I'm not... Bit of Springsteen there, Brilliant Disguise on XFM 104.9. I think that's, that soothes you a little bit, that's, that, that's- Not really. Taking a bit of- I, I just remembered something as well. 80 quid, Rick, 80 quid. You know what, uh, um, we finished the talk at about sort of three, and we had a couple of hours to kill before we got the- uh, about that half two, wasn't it? We had a couple of hours before we got the, the taxi. And, uh, and we were eating in this cafe, and, uh, uh, so he said, how long's your train journey? I said, oh, four and a half hours. He went, so you got, oh, what was I getting? I said, I'll get in about ten. He went, half six, me. Uh, and he's quite smug. And I went, yeah, I said, it is it's quite a long time. I just started to sort of relax now. He went, yeah, I said, but he said, I think I'm come off better here. Because usually you've organised all this stuff. He said, but I think you've chosen wrong. Here. I, think, I said, I think you're right. <laughs> Yeah. You? Don't you think those words were <laughs> coming back to haunt me as I was <laughs> handing over 165 <laughs> notes. I was, all I was thinking was, and I was on the train be in first class, drinking uh, John Smiths yeah. and listening to Mercedes Walkman. Yeah, but I handed over my initial card. <laughs> she said 165 quid, and I went fine. I handed over the card. Uh, yeah. It was a switch card. She said we don't take switch. Don't they? I was thinking, how? What am I going to do then? I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to get the money from. What did you do in the end? Then? Well, the luckily I had another card. Oh right, and um, and she managed to accept that one. But I, I don't know what I'd have done. I don't genuinely. You didn't don't know tell what me done. you had another card. <laughs> yeah, I got two cards. Have you? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, oh, that um, is depressing. I was so depressed because I just kept thinking about what I said to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've won this time because normally I'm always like legging it for tubes, or I'm just you know where I get stuck in the rain. Or and something. I've I just organised the drive or something. Travel. Because when you get me, I said, "Why? It's up to you. It's up to you." You know what I mean? Every man for themselves. But this time it was four and a half hours, and I was just at forty minutes on the tr on the plane. There'd have been no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm so livid. Do you know, I got off the- because I'm just not very well either, I'm a bit ill at the moment. I got off the, the plane and I thought, well, I could get a cab from the airport all the way back home, but you know, I've already been stung for 165 quid, got the tube, it took me forever. Really? I'm not gonna lie to you, it took me forever. I was like, I got in probably later than you did. <laughs> around the 11 o'clock mark. You didn't really? No, I wasn't quite as bad oh. as that. But I'm so depressed, I'm really depressed, Rick, so I was saying like 50 quid is well, what I'm money, I mean, Steve does not like to waste money, and I, I mean, by that I mean- I mean, I don't like to spend money. No, um, 
We had to, we had to go out and get our shirt for a photo shoot. Not quite an important photo shoot for, I think, the, the Times. I went out, buying a shirt, buying a shirt, went out, planned it, went short. Came back, four nine, fourteen ninety nine from Henny's. Henny's, fourteen ninety nine. He knew where he was aiming. He aimed straight for Henny's. He knew, he knew where he can get a bargain. Uh, this is a man. But I, it seems to me that at that kind of price, you can throw them away, Av. You don't even need to wash them, really. You can throw them away using, like, Kleenex. Have you ever thrown one away? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Just scrape off the stains and keep on wearing it. <laughs> Remember that time when we went to the casino for my birthday? Day, and I was like hundred quid down, and some people were hundred quid up and hundred quid down. Uh, he, after the three hours we were there, was down twenty pounds. Genuinely depressed. I was almost crying. Yeah. Because I don't. Well, it's because it's a, it's a mugs game gambling. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> was that where we? Because I went there. It was uh, when it was one time we went there. It was uh, our agent's. Oh, birthday. that was another time we went yeah. there. Right? And he was up. And he'd, he'd got a, uh, he got a win, he was 30 quid up. And so I said, it's your round then. <laughs> and the round was more than 30 quid. And he couldn't believe it. And he sat down and he went, I can't believe it. He said, and I bought him a present, so I was already down. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I turned out I was already down because I bought our agent a gift. He didn't, I didn't see him buy it. And you know that thing where you're buying a round of drinks for people you don't even know? So it's like, what's the story there? Why am I suddenly bankrolling you drinks? It's like, I don't know you people. I'm not going to get any kind of, I'm not going to see you again to sort of reap the benefits at a later point. Because he came in I'm with not, his three Most of you are married or engaged, so I'm not even going to pull from it. It was a waste of time. It was, it was like, just it, pure generosity. It was something like from Swingers, because he came into the cocktail bar holding three chips up worth £10 each yeah. and went, hello, <laughs> like that. Yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. £30 up. That's a lot of money, Rick. Uh, you know, Carl, you, yeah. you know that. 30 quid. You don't want to sniff at that. Oh, what, what, what songs should we play? This, we've got lots of songs in. It's our bit of, uh, bit of Incubus. Oh. Just right. a bit more depressed. Oh. Do you know what I, mean? oh, I thought it was a bit slow. I know, but I'm a fan. I don't like slow songs, I, I, but I, I really do like, I've, always, I've been, always been a fan, of, even from, you know, early days. Yeah. I, I thought his first song was really great and much maligned. People didn't like it because they were expecting, like, you know. The verve. Yeah. Yeah. Urban hymns and all that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's great. On XFM 104.9. Who are you? Ricky Gervais, who are you? Steve Merchant. Who's that little round headed oh, fellow there? He's Carl Pilkington. Carl, we haven't had a lot of Carl today. He's a bit tired, aren't you? Just a little bit. What happened? Bit you noise, you came back from Edinburgh today as well, didn't you, on the plane? This morning. Yeah. Got an early, an early flight. Yeah. Um, it's just annoying me because there's, there was like people on the plane fighting over, um, where they wanted to sit. Uh, Surely they've got designated seats. Well, they have, but that wasn't good enough for them. They wanted like they wanted to sit next to the friends and that. And it's like, well, you can't because you didn't check in together. So that's that's the way it is. Yeah, done. But the thing is, it's from Edinburgh, forty minutes. Yeah, and I just don't understand this sort of. You can stand for that long, can't you? Well, what, why do you have to sit next to the person anyway, to be honest? I mean, fair enough, if you're going on a long flight, someone to talk to, but for 40 minutes, it really doesn't matter. I never want anyone to talk to. I, I don't want anyone sitting next to me to talk to me. Why? Well, what are they there for? What? I, I don't mean people I go with. I mean, if I'm travelling alone and I sit next to someone, I don't want them to talk to me. Yeah, but... I don't really know. If I was travelling with you, I'd really not want you to talk to me. <laughs> not if you're going to talk like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is this. Carl, you sound like you're suicidal, mate. It was just a couple of people arguing. It's over, man. Yeah. The plane journey's finished. Why is it still stewing he's, you he's, up? He, he paid 160 quid and he's not winning. He doesn't care. He's, 165 he's... quid. Let's get it right. <laughs> if we're going to bring it up, if we're going to mention it. <laughs> and it's like Walker looks back to him. Look, he's, he <laughs> just. He goes, mate, he said, he said to me, Rick, it's only money, is, and money is just something you have in case you don't die tomorrow. He's got a great attitude towards money, Steve. It's like, easy come, easy go. So just take a leaf out of Steve the I'm not spending that much merchant and you'll have a happier life. Sorry, I just need to defend myself for a minute. There yeah. are certain instances in life where, you see, you know you're giving me an attitude like that I'm tight. It's not tight. No, it's no, the, no, 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 shut up. Let me defend myself. It's not that I'm tight with money. It's that I want to get value for money at all times. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I'd, you probably got a lot of cash given to you, maybe it's pocket money when you were a kid. I Every didn't. penny I've ever had, it's been money I've earned. Yeah. So frankly, yeah. I'm going to spend it wisely. Like, for instance, you might be, say you're in a party or so you're at a party, maybe out in a bar with some, someone's birthday, you get talking to a girl, right? Maybe you buy her some drinks, right? You're chatting to her, mm -hmm. and then you're chatting away for two hours, and then at the end of the evening, she says, Oh, da 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 da, da I've got to go and meet my boyfriend now. Right? She's wasted my money and my time there. Yeah. That's two hours wasted and money wasted, right? Now, she should have told me straight away that she had a boyfriend. 
and I wouldn't have bothered with right. her. I'd have moved Ma- on. I'd have what, looked on. What if like she thought she was just having a chat with another human being? Eric, where you, I'm being deliberately deceived <laughs> <laughs> so people could extract money from me or interesting <laughs> conversation. Yeah. She knew what I was after. It was yeah. obvious. The drooling yeah. mouth, you yeah. know, the, uh, the beady eyes. And, 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 and yet she was leading me on. And she was a prostitute. And think how we felt about that. I mean, what a slap in the face. let's not try and cheapen it with that kind of cheap sexual innuendo, right? She, she could occasionally slept with me for money. It wasn't for money, it was for meals. Yeah. No, but the point was, do you know what I mean? It's just that sort of attitude generally in my life. It's like, don't waste my time, you know? Don't waste my time or my money. You're like, life is, the clock is ticking as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, and so just, if if you've got a boyfriend and I come up and I'm chatting you up, just let me know and I'll move on. I won't bother you. Yes, please. This, I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel we should, they should definitely introduce some kind of badge You see, the problem is that women without boyfriends will be wearing those badges now and you won't be able to, you know what I mean? You won't be able to say, have you really got a boyfriend? <laughs> no, I just think there should be some kind of sort of, this sort of, there should be an etiquette, there should be an understanding. Yeah. You know, because they know, yeah. like, they can see what I'm after. It's obvious. <laughs> is it obvious, yes, is it? Yes, I make you're it not, very clear. You're not a subtle man. No, I just come over and pant. Do you still, do you still try and attract their attention by throwing small rocks at them? Yeah. As they, you know, yeah, does that, has that yeah, ever worked? Occasionally. Is it really? You know, the desperate ones or homeless ones. Oh, the homeless but, ones. He once, right, he said to me, he came in, to, uh, uh, work, and he said, uh, I gave a homeless girl a, a pound, right, because I fancied her. He said, is that wrong? Is that really bad I of me? I don't think it is, you see. I don't <laughs> think it is, because it seems to me if she, she was an attractive homeless girl, then she deserves some of my money. Cause I just imagine him slowing down. I imagine him, like, going past loads of trams, going, get out of it, get a job. And she goes, he go, ah, <laughs> hello. But I have to say, I did for a moment just pause and think to myself whether I could kind of scoop her up <laughs> in my arms, take her back to my place, and kind of turn her life around, like my fair lady. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of teach her to speak properly and dress her up in smart clothes and take her out into sort of society. Yeah. I think that's where your first mistake was. She said, listen, love, I'm up for it if I can hose you down. <laughs> that was where you went wrong. <laughs> Smiths, Cemetery Gates, great, wasn't it? Always cracking. Off Queen is Dead, voted best album of all time, I think, in an enemy poll. I don't think it is their Stranger best album. Stranger is here we come. I agree. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Cracking. Anyway, Carl, yeah, so people are arguing on the flight. How, how did you enjoy Edinburgh, by the way, anyway? Because I saw you out there briefly with you and um, Nick Frost, your new mates, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. You know, uh, he prefers them to us now. I know, apparently, I could tell that from just talking to him, really. It, it was just, it was the way he was sort of looking at them, everything like, he was just smiling at Nick Frost, he's, it's his new best chum, you love right. Nick Frost, don't Would you? Would you have preferred it, right, right if <laughs> I went to Edinburgh and, and had to sit with some people that I really didn't like? Would no. you have, would you have been happier for me? No, uh, do you know, but right. I, oh, so I, I had a great time with yeah. Simon and Nick, and they'd, and they'd nice people. What, he kept going, he kept going, he kept going to, uh, oi, oi, Nick, tell Ricky that story. And Ethan, and Nick and Simon, wow, well, all it was, right, and they're ghost stories, that's, he loves them because they believe in ghosts. Oh. It's not, not just they're great oh, blokes with a great nothing. sense of humour, just because they believe in ghosts. You go and tell them that, he goes, how'd you explain that? I was going, well, I wasn't there. What was that one you told me and it was completely wrong? About the... It was, uh... Oh, yeah, right, it's th- th- years ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, some... some In olden do- days. Oh, sure. When ghosts like, roamed the earth. Once upon a time, you mean? <laughs> yeah. Some doctor or something who was into, like, the way bodies work, um, they got their head cut off. Uh, who and did? The doctor? Yeah, he was doing a bit of an experiment. And he cut his own head off? He, yeah. Okay. And it was about, um, he said, when my head's in the basket, I'm gonna blink my eyes. Right. Okay, sorry, hang on, let, let him finish. <laughs> and, um... So the doctor has chopped his own head off and, and he's told everyone, I'm gonna blink my eyes. To no, he's in, he's in the basket and he goes like, right, I'm gonna blink my eyes about, f- you know, as many times as I can. So quick, count them. And, and they count and he got to like 15 before he'd, he'd, he'd Right. Died. Now this is how Carl told me that. Till, till Nick Frost explained that, Carl told me that he said, right, well a bloke, right, he had his head cut off and, as it, and it, when his head was in the basket, he went, count how many times I can blink. <laughs> and I went, well that's rubbish. He went, no. And Nick went, well no, he, he actually said when my head's in the basket. He went, and Carl went, oh, right. I said, so Carl, do you know the subtle difference? Do you see the subtle difference? I have to what? say though, guys, I still don't really understand what went on there. I really, uh, you've well, both well, lost me. Uh, the story is that a bloke who'd been found doing, um, uh, do, uh, You mean that Carl just explained it and that was a clear version? Because <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about, Carl. Well, this bloke had his head cut off for uh, experiments against God. He was a doctor in the, you know, uh, in olden times. Yeah. And when they cut his head off. Um, Why did they cut his head off? Um, because uh, it was. Uh, he it was executed. Crimes against, exactly, he was executed, yeah. And, uh, 
uh, he said to his assistant, when my head's in the basket, I'm gonna blink, count how many times I blink and write it down as an experiment, right? Carl told it to me, like, his head was cut off and he went in the basket, and when his head was in the basket, he looked up and said, <laughs> count how many times I blink. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love the difference in that story. Yeah. yeah. Both rubbish, yeah. but, um, you know, one's, one's Why possible you and one isn't. Anything, you believe anything that you're told except when we tell you the truth. Right, yeah. here's one. Christ. Ghosts and that we got we got talking about. Sure. Yeah. And Nick uh, Nick said, right. He said you'll like this one. <laughs> he said uh, my uh, my auntie um, was having loads of problems. Why are you whispering? It. It's not illegal like, to talk about ghosts on the radio. No, but, but he's hearing and, this. Um, so um, <laughs> the auntie's in the house and that and um, furniture's moving about all the time. Oh god. And they were like, no, oh, is... Steve, you told me this one. This is such rubbish, mate. No, come I'm on, let's listen. I'm going to leave it to you. I'm going to sit back and l enjoy it. I'm just going to watch your face, Steve. Right. Sorry, so, so I missed said, the beginning uh, there, Carl. There's an anti Basically, end. Nick's auntie. Right. Um, in the house, things moving around all the time. Oh, and it was just annoying every time she tidied up. It was like, oh, <laughs> it's just annoying. Making a mess. <laughs> it was one part annoying to two parts scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, stuff dear. was stuff was moving around all the time, and yeah. they said, right, rather than right, we need an housekeeper. Yeah. Rather than having the house a mess, uh, <laughs> until we sort Stop this out. Stop it! <laughs> I've got the vicar coming round. Stop moving I stuff love around. This. Oh, yeah, go on. They said that shouldn't be in the pants drawer. <laughs> Let's put all the furniture in one room, right? right. So uh, just have one room that's a mess, and have all the others <laughs> empty. Because I love the poltergeist can't really, uh, it can move wardrobes around, but it can't open the door to put it in another room. Yeah. Poltergeist going, oh, I'm just making this room messy. I wish someone opened the door so I could. F Go on. Yeah, but. So, so all this stuff's in this room. So right? they moved it, all their furniture everything into one room. They put like the drawers in there and everything, and <laughs> it was really uncomfortable because they were all like on top well, of each they other. They sat in the room with all the stuff. Yeah, they had to because that's where the freeze piece suite was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh God! Right. Oh, right. oh God! So they sat there, right, all crumpled up and that, but nothing can move because it's so tight. Things, yeah. I think things were trying to move. Yeah, but yeah everything yeah. was so tight. It's they just boxed like... that reporter, guys. So, um, so anyway, one night they sat there, like sort of a bit awkward watching the telly and that, and um, they hear some banging. Yeah. In the next room. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, she goes, oh god, what's that? Oh, he hadn't moved in, I knew the ghost. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> to some of the empty rooms. So, there's this bang. <laughs> moved some friends and family in. <laughs> there's this banging about going on. No, so this, 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 she, this she gets up. Right. Yeah. And what it is, they had the baby in the next room because there wasn't much room for the cot. Right, so they left the baby with, with the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so, they go into the room where the baby is <gasps> and the banging. Yeah. Is like, do you know those plastic balls you get that you can chuck around the room and like they go mental? Right. The ones that you chuck once and yeah, they keep yeah. bouncing yeah, yeah, for ages. Yeah, yeah. That was bouncing around the room. Why? Oh, what the baby all, had thrown it? It in all the walls and the baby was there, stood in the cot, sort of laughing. Right. And looking at the ball and wherever it looked, the ball went. Yeah. And then th she said, uh, she said, stop doing that. Yeah. And the ball just stopped. Did it? And it. And it rolled a bit and stopped. Right. So the baby had thrown the ball and it was watching it as it bounced around the room? It wasn't throwing it, it was in control of it. No, the point is, Steve. The baby has been doing it. It would have been the baby all along. The baby had been messing with the furniture. It was so the baby a that super had the baby. power. <laughs> yeah, it's a baby that had the power. Special baby. It's special a baby, baby that had the power. It's what, what a baby power? that had the power. What, the, power what's the power of telekinesis. Right. They were then trying to convince me that uh, telekinesis was not like all the other stuff that I didn't believe in, but that was a science. Right. Telekinesis was possible. Yes. Yeah. It's not. It's not like. It's not like ghosts and demons and uh, all that sort of telekinesis is different. Yeah, that, that's yeah. science. Um, but, Nick, but Nick's auntie saw it, and I love the fact that you're telling me that someone else's auntie <laughs> saw it. <laughs> so I should be I should be satisfied with that. Yeah. I, I, I should be satisfied with that. I mean, no. so does she still live in one room with all her possessions? No, I think the uh, baby the, grew out of it. Apparently, it, it grew the up. baby grew out of it. it. So it doesn't use its telekinesis powers no. anymore. Well, no, it's no. like in Carrie, in it. She she was upset for a bit, and then she got over it. Okay, I'm yeah. just gonna say one thing, Carl. Um, that was a film. Do you want to play a record or? Oh. <laughs> Alright, on XFM 104.9. Can I just tell you a story that Carl told me a couple of weeks ago? Is this another um, ghost story? Another yeah, it is, story? yeah. Um, 
Uh, I called him out. I was, what are you doing? He said, oh, I said, I've just been reading ghost stories again. He went, th he said, right, he said, you don't believe in him, but how do you explain this? Right, I went, go on. He said, uh, I'll tell you as he told me it. He went, um, blog, right, just sitting at home, just sitting at home, doing, you know, watching telly with, with his cat. And, uh, the phone rings and it's a bloke going, uh, oh, uh, is that fire, uh, in your oven okay now? Um, cause your wife called. And he went, Carl went, well, one, there was no fire in the oven. Two, he wasn't married. <laughs> I went, right. Go on, he went, well. Then, right, there was a knock at the door and there was two sort of people in sort of well, white coats and they, and they kind of said, oh, we've come about that fire. Your wife called us. He went, one, there isn't a fire in my oven and two, I'm not even married. Right? And he said, and they saw the cat and they sort of, they looked at the cat, it looks a bit weird at the cat, the cat came out, uh, uh, and uh, he said, and then he went back and sat down, phone rings and they said, oh, uh, did they sort out the fire in the oven that your wife told us about? Oh. He went, one, there is no fire in my oven, two, I haven't got a wife. And Carl went, what do you think of that? I went, that's not it. <laughs> he went, yeah, I went. <laughs> That's the end of the I story. What? 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 He went, well, how'd you explain that? I went, explain what? I thought he was gonna say, <laughs> a year later we got married but she died in an oven fire. <laughs> right? I thought it was gonna be that. And I went, That's what? people winding him up. Yeah. Or, 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 or um, someone did report a fire oven and their name was Johnson and they looked up Johnson they got the wrong thing, it was the gas board or <laughs> and they sent around to the wrong person, right? Do you know what? He, he, went, he went, yeah. I said, I explained it to him. He went, yeah. Why do they look at the cat funny? <laughs> Oh, man alive, Carl. This is really weird, right? I was, um, I was, uh, in my house once, right, and the doorbell rang. Yeah. Right, I opened the door, there was no one there. Yeah. Right? And then I looked across the street, there was right, some kids there were some kids running away. Yeah. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah. There was another time, right, where, like, I, I opened the door and there was a bloke goes, you've ordered pizza. I went, I haven't ordered pizza. And I heard my mate upstairs giggling and putting the phone down. Yeah. How do you explain that? Carl, seriously, what did you, why did you tell me that story? What did you think, what do you think that was weird about that? The fact that it was three different people. Is this all the information? Is that the entire story? Have you, did it was you, three different people. Did you fall asleep and not read the end? A fire that didn't happen. About a wife that didn't exist. <laughs> and a cat that didn't look happy. <laughs> I'm gonna have a heart attack, Carl. What? I mean, why? Why did they look at the cat funny? Because what? cats don't don't like um, spirits, do they? <laughs> what? And the other blokes were ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So these are, these are kind of beetle about type ghosts. <laughs> these are ghosts who walk the st walk the earth as the ah, undead, just wind oh, people up slightly. That's lovely. That is but lovely. Seriously, and a cat that did not look happy. But seriously, why would ghosts like, wander around just like winding people up? <laughs> oh, maybe something did happen there years ago. Mm. Some fire. Some woman might have died in a house of a fire or something. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it sort of all happened again. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's certainly a mystery. It's, well, certainly it's a mystery. Yeah. I mean, I can't. I can't What's this I... book you were reading? You were reading a book, which is interesting enough. There was, um, it was the Fatian, the Fatian Times. Oh, Carl. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, I'll tell you this, Carl, there is a track that will, uh, that will spook you right out. <laughs> this is Warren Zevon from, uh, what was it, like, about 1979, early oh, 80s? Oh, great track. Werewolves of London. Play this, Carl. <laughs> but don't be scared. <laughs> From 1978, Carl, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. Are you a fan of that? It's all right, that. Great track, isn't it? Fans right. of Warren Zevon, maybe if you should know he's got a new album out. Oh. As we speak. Although, if you're a fan, you probably know that already. Yeah. If you are People a fan, who hate him would yeah. be interested we'll be, in knowing yeah. that he's got a new album out. Yeah. Do you believe in, uh, I think, Werewolves. Lycanthropy? Is it, is it not called? What's that, sorry? Lycanthropy. What's Lycanthropy? Isn't that wa werewolfism? Really? Isn't it? Isn't it? Do you believe in that, Carl? They've, they've, they've found stuff, haven't they? They've found kids walking about who are all airy. Because right. uh, <laughs> they've they sort of grew up with uh, wolves and that. Yeah. So, no, you see, <laughs> two things there. Um, right, uh, you cannot take on acquired uh, characteristics genetically. So, if you grew up with wolves, it wouldn't suddenly make you hairy. Uh, there's two, been pictures, there's been pictures, there's been stories on it, and I reckon most people have, or a lot of people have seen the stories. It's a popular you thing. Mean, you mean the kids that are born hairy? No, no, there's kids who have been born hairy, right? Yeah, that's it. No, but listen, and they walk around on all fours, <laughs> and they drink milk from a saucer. <laughs>
Oh, I've... Steve, this is no, too remember, easy. listen, remember that time with the maggot and the head? Yeah. Um, and getting out with bacon and you were like laughing and then people called up and said, yeah, I've, I've seen that, I've read about that. Yeah, this but is the same you, thing. Have you is... seen an XFM listener up close? Have you ever looked? They study? drink milk from a saucer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've got to be kept on leads. People who listen to this show. There's, there's no point in me telling you about stuff. There is, it's comedy see, gold. When you, when you were out of school, did you keep arguing with the teacher saying you're talking rubbish there? Teachers didn't teach us about werewolf boys and ghosts. <laughs> they taught us maths. God, right, tell the story about the man I'll cover. Right, in the same magazine as, uh, as the one with the, with the cat and the fire and that. Don't tell me that story again, it gives me the shit. Yeah, a cat that's got a weird expression on his yeah. face is well, against it, God. Anyway, this isn't a scary story, this was just, uh, like physics. Explain. Physics. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It was going on about the, uh, nuclear bomb and uh, how powerful it is. And, uh, <laughs> they put, they put a manhole cover on top of one. <laughs> Blew it up. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw the man I'll cover again. <laughs> <laughs> man alive, Carl. <laughs> What's that. going on there? Something weird is happening there! <laughs> oh! If anyone has ever seen that man on cover, <laughs> yeah, uh, please yeah. get in touch, we'd love to know where it is. Oh, that's fantastic. What sort of experiment is that? I imagine all these scientists on multi-billion pound research budgets, they're going, we test everything, what would you do to man on cover? Don't know. That's like letting a couple of students. <laughs> yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. Do you reckon they could Let's send a traffic cone, cone yeah. into orbit? Go on then, put it on there. <laughs> I love that. I imagine that. What uh, what, of what value is that? <laughs> I'm like, so what we could do, we could let the, put the manhole cover on it and aim it and then blow the bomb up and it would, it would, the manhole cover would have someone's eye out! <laughs> fire it! See if you can fire manhole covers <laughs> off the nuclear bomb. I'll have a, toy bangers to a bomb, see if it's louder. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay, listen, Carl, play another track and then afterwards, can we probe your views on the, the week's news? If you want. We'll do a bit of a white van Carl session. <laughs> Pumpkins. Today. Today. Today true. is the greatest, because yeah. we're back. That's true enough. All right. I hope people uh, re were listening to that loud uh, in this lovely summer's day. Or, or I mean, I'll call, no, not too loud. Well, don't, 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 don't annoy people. That, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. White Van Carl. Yeah, White Van Carl. I mean, uh, for those that don't know, we do this, uh, We um, ask week. Carl the questions that the Sun asked someone else. That's right, the Sun every day asks, um, some, you know, average Joe, his views on the week's big stories. Mm. Carl, let me ask you now, um, what do you make of Prince Harry smoking openly at a polo club? Um, Are you aware of this story? No. Was it? Go on. Prince Harry, you know that he's one of the royals. Yeah. And he was seen smoking openly, openly, a fag, a cigarette. Uh, a polo third third cigarette. in line to the throne. Something like that, yeah. Imagine that. Someone right? smoking a cigarette is third in line to the throne. A cigarette, Carl. Is it a non-smoking polo club? Do you know, I don't know, but, uh, but if it were, would that make things even worse for you? Well, no, yeah. seriously, what, what do you make of it? This is, this is, you know, the whole, you know, the, the furore is he's a role model, you know, he's a royal, should he be seen puffing away in a public place? I don't think it matters, does it? Not concerned for you? How old is he? Is he old enough to smoke? I think he probably is, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I think the trouble with, um, this role model thing with anything that's legal, it should either be illegal or not. Yeah. I just don't think you can impose things like that, well, yeah. uh, because you could say that it is bad for you and it is bad to start smoking and it really is bad for you and it, you know, it causes cancer and everything. But everyone knows so that, don't they? Uh, well, yeah, but you should either make it illegal or shut up about it. So this is Carl you're asking, isn't I it? I am indeed. So, oh, so yes. we can throw these questions your way as well if you fancy. Sorry, them. yeah. It doesn't, but, it doesn't uh, matter. But Carl, what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are uh, perfectly legal and so on, but what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't no, know. what's your concern? What's your worry? Just yeah. like you might get into them. Sure. It's like you might have them and go, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, although I was talking to you about it earlier and you weren't that very, you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who, who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You, you, didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where I grew up, but I said, well, I don't want to do that, it's not good for you. Sure. I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've so got no sympathy for anyone who's, who's a drug addict? It's their own fault, is your It depends, your doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean? You can be an addict if, I don't know, something, I'm trying to think of a nice way that well, you might Well, most people start on stuff like that because something really traumatic happened to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and, and, and go, let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but 
Yeah. Just I say know. no. I suppose it's the, uh, the, Just the say no. The Listen to the uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there. Well, according yeah. to the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face. Look at that. He looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car. He's terrified. I love Carl. He's sprung to attention Carl. there. I love that. Is that is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> 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 right, yeah, man Carl, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats an entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow from mammoth? the Ice Age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that, then. <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth, a man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh, if we'd if we'd have uh, never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now. Yeah, you know, they've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what we a, mean. This is how things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you slightly stories? deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf. And his head and his head was in the basket, and he went, "Count how many times I blink." Is it? I. Is Carl, uh, Carl, is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah, the thing? Yeah. Do, should we, we speak slower? When we slower? say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No, go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's Seriously, good? Do we good to bring back, back mammoths? Uh, <laughs> These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'll probably be offended, to be honest, Carl. They'll probably be offended. No, but, I'm say, but, they're, but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, could it? Well, really? but, but 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 the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong. They thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, have you learned nothing uh, from Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, "Oh, f think about it before you do it." But <laughs> with a with a airy elephant, it's it's not going to. Not a concern for you. Would oh. you go along to see him? Would you be interested in that? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. He's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a cue, Nothing right? Impresses no, me. but what I'd like to do is Carl sitting like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and you know Stephen Hawking in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah. Yeah. Problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I might close around and have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, um, my clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a second. What, what, as, as the words man moth came into your head. How excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited? For just for the moment when you thought that they cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face I'll, did he have? Was, did he have the moth's head or was it a man's just head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what what was his face? What did it look like? Just, he just was like a bit like, a bit, bit shocked. Perplexed, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, like so, it was like he'd been he'd been he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth yeah. without his, his consent. And when he was asleep, no yeah, he'd woken up. He just he just went in for to have a goiter removed, yeah. and they said we've he replaced your with goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah, just is that all right, Mr. Jenkins? I'm so sorry. he had the head of a, a little was it a little boy or a man? Little man, right? Okay, and he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you, Carl, if you if you uh, went into hospital. And, and they'd done something. Uh, what, what's the worst thing they could do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it, in fights and stuff? And uh, for like parties, people would like. Well, I suppose the lobster claws would also be quite handy there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so first show back. Yeah, it's not bad. It's great to be I'm back. I'm just thinking about that money, Rick. To be honest, I know. Still playing that on my mind. I know. Yeah. Could we maybe get like a sort of telethon type thing going or a little charity? Can you just sort of help me pay You can't really ask people to send you money, really? it's technically begging. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Unless you're a are, you, are you a registered charity? <laughs> um, I suppose not, not really. We could probably get you status. Yeah. But could I promise, I mean, could I pretend to give them something in return? I mean, am I allowed to sell things on the radio? Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah. So Although you probably, you probably get in trouble with uh, the authority if you're, you're using it to sort of like, to your own. Okay, not like everyone else doesn't. Not exactly. Yeah. Free lunches and yeah. sponsorship and yeah, God knows yeah, what. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, yeah. Probably the people that work here, small fry, the 
yeah. scum. Exactly, the nobodies, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 165 quid's pretty, it's quite a lot of money, so, I mean, if you want to contribute anything, Rick, as I said before, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, no, mm. I, I, I would if, it, if I felt any responsibility. Right. Or, yeah, or, or cared. Sure, sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, I got there too early, which is annoying. <laughs> um, what we should have done, really, was, uh, get you your plane and come back, cos I'd have had time. You know, I, I was gonna mention <laughs> it at the time, but I didn't want to, cos I knew the answer would be no. So <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Carl. Oh, I, 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 really, I've had a great time. I've forgotten, I've forgotten how good it was just to have a normal com- I say normal, just to have a conversation with you. Have you been looking forward to this? You're, he's really down today, isn't he? He's down, man, isn't he? Just a bit tired. But it's interesting, cos I said to him, I said to him, did you enjoy Edinburgh? He spent this, the week up in Edinburgh, yeah. obviously, and uh, he said, yeah, well, he loved it up there, he's been mm. partying every night, and he actually enjoyed it, and I've never, I've never met him when he's actually enjoyed anything before. He's never enjoyed anything, as far as I know, and I was depressed that we weren't involved. It's pa- his, his paper round. He loved the paper round, and this Best. is the first time yeah, he's He was talking about the other day as well, but I said to him, that's what he really thinks, that that paper round he had when he was 14 was the best job he'd ever had. Yeah. He still yeah. thinks it's the best job, because he, was, he said he was his own boss would no you weren't. <laughs> he went, well I can get on my bike and think. And he said, I bet if I phoned those people who I delivered the papers to, they'd say it was the best delivery they've ever had. He said, in fact, I bet a lot of them have chucked in the delivery because it went downhill. This is all, it's yeah, all yeah, yeah, he's yeah. thinking this as yeah. he went along. Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. Imagine phoning someone up and saying, you don't remember me, but I used to deliver your paper ten years ago. Was it the best delivery service <laughs> you've ever had? No, but if I said I delivered it ten years ago, um, you used to, if you got up at like six in the morning, it was there for you. Yeah. There's no other paper boy. Who could guarantee that they'd have that paper when they got? Carl, if you could earn enough money, would you do a paper round again? If you, if that was your job, but we, you were being paid enough to make a living from it, would, would that, is that something you think about? Uh, do you think you'd enjoy it as much nowadays? Yeah, I reckon I would. Yeah. Yeah. yeah listen to some music. Sure. Uh, a thousand pound a week. Would you do the best? Yeah. Of, yeah. Would you really? Yeah. Is oh, there God. anyone out there who is willing to test that? Is there anyone who's willing to pay Carl? Right, a grand. some of them are a grand yeah. to take a week off work and deliver papers just for that week. All day though, it's all day. No, 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 no. I'll what? get up and the, the customers will have their paper. Yeah, but can I say what street it is? No, because no, no, it's the M25. <laughs> See, you are being paid a thousand pounds. Yeah, that's really good. You've got to more. deliver to the M25. I'll tell you what. Let's 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 take the mood down a little bit and play one of the most beautiful songs I've been looking forward to getting. I just play this. To be honest, it's Jimmy Webb's uh, version of Galveston. Galveston, there by the brilliant Jimmy Webb. Uh huh. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? He wrote it. Yes. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really, Jimmy Webb, who wrote it? Yeah. It was all one sentence. Yes. Did I confuse you? Again, yeah. With my speech patterns. It's just, just using the English language is always helpful. Right? But compared to Carl, I'm, I'm Oscar Wilde, aren't I? I suppose so. <laughs> Be afraid. Electric soft train on XFM 104.9. <laughs> Not long to go on our, uh, on our ret- a triumphant return. I think, uh, oh, I think the patients would be saying, Steve. Yes, yes. Um, Carl, um, I've I met Carl a couple of times in our, our, our sabbatical, and, uh, he, uh, said to me once, he said, um, oysters. I said, have you ever tried oysters? I, I, I don't like them. And I went, uh, he said, oh, it's just, just a thing about swallowing them whole, you know. He went, well, the reason you have to do that is just they're, they're fatally poisonous. <laughs> And if you bite into them, they kill you. And I went, well, of course they don't. He went, yeah. I went, well, of, co- of course they wouldn't. <laughs> what have you chewed on? I said, he said, no. I said, well, so you swallow them whole and they're not poisonous. He went, yeah, ah, see. He said, so, he said, when you swallow heroin in a, in a Johnny, he says, that doesn't kill you, does it? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Oh. And then, uh, about a week later, he went, I was wrong about them. <laughs> you are. Yeah, I went, well, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did you say? It's if you eat them and then you have some whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> they they turn deadly when when whiskey comes into contact with them. Yeah, when when uh, when they've had a drink. <laughs> when they've had a drink, they get a bit rowdy in your stomach. They right. start fighting. They can yeah, cause it. Larry. So, 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 so what are you saying now? Are you saying you don't believe that? Am I saying what? Are you saying you don't believe that? He that? thinks he's got us here. He thinks he's got us here. Yeah, I don't believe that if you eat an oyster, then drink some whiskey, you die. You might not die straight away, but you won't. Eventually, feel. fifty years time. If you've got, you've got to keep on drinking whiskey. Uh, yeah, 50, a bottle a day. Fifty or sixty years later, he was dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oyster and a bottle of whiskey a day. <laughs> oh, then out of nowhere, forty years what, later. Where does this information come from, Carl? If, if some doctor called up now, yeah, and put you right, would you believe him? If it wasn't Doctor Fox, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> what about the airy, airy lads growing up with the werewolves and that? They didn't grow up they with didn't werewolves. werewolves. Grow up with werewolves. You're confused they're about three different the genetic stories, right? mutation where the, you know they were born with a uh, very very hirsute. There were a couple of kids. Yes, they didn't we know. grow up with wolves. And you can't kill them with a silver bullet. I mean. You're confusing two things. There aren't were you? some kids who were very, very hairy. Yes, yeah. they're in folklore. There were some kids who grew up with wolves. Yes, I don't think the two are connected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no such thing as werewolves, Carl. <laughs> you, you believe me? I saw a documentary on it on the History Channel. You'd have loved it. You, you, you grew the up with a of werewolves. You know, you don't flap around, do you, and steal people's jewellery? Yeah. What was the thing you told me about snails? Uh, have you ever had any? Um, any post that that looks like it's been opened? Occasionally, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, what it is? It's not your postman having a a sneaky look. A sneaky look. <laughs> Problem is, right? Uh, slugs. <laughs> the problem's slugs. Slugs at <laughs> night. They like nipping about and that, and it gets a bit cold. And in London, like in the country, they go into the grass, don't they? Right. But in London, it's like, oh, what can we do? <laughs> and um, they go in letter boxes. Right? Slugs go in letter Get boxes. Get in letter bo boxes. It's nice and warm in there, uh, dry and what have you. And um, <laughs> these are homeless slugs, aren't they? The ones that lost their shell. When they're in there, they only found out that they love glue. <laughs> they and love they've, glue. They've been eating uh, eating the glue off the stamps. Right. And um, <laughs> people have been getting charged for posts because it hasn't had stamps on it. It's like, well, they put a stamp on it. Yeah. It's like it's, slugs have been eating it. Sure. <laughs> and they also eat the glue that's on the actual envelope shutter. And it's a real popular problem, this, that uh, <laughs> letters are being lost and opened and all that stuff. Yeah. Slugs. I like, are slugs like stealing postal orders and things and catching them in and stuff? <laughs> yeah, again, you know, if there's a doctor, if there's a postman. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, well, with us two expert witnesses, a doctor and a postman. So, uh, <laughs> so posties is a real problem. Um, so uh, is, when we see when we see uh, a slug's trail or a snail's trail, it's glue. That's the glue they've stolen, is it? That's they've just that's a little. We, I'm not. I'm not going to say yes to that. that I'm not follow, sure, but we could follow that trail and, and find the, them, and they'd have a big sort of <laughs> big uh, Yeah, our stamps and <laughs> yeah, there they are. <laughs> like birthday cards from our aunt and stuff. Yeah, but a two pound notes. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. Slugs. Wow. So, oysters and whiskey kill ya, and slugs. Be very careful. Post. If you're gonna go out this evening, you're thinking of having a whiskey, maybe some oysters, be very, very careful. Yeah, and if you, are gonna, if you are gonna post a letter, please, please, please do not use please. tasty glue. <laughs>to form there, Oasis, and little by little, this is XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, who are you? Uh, my name's Steve Merchant, good to see you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, with us, uh, the producer in the studio is Carl Pilton, and he'll be doing the buttons. <laughs> yeah. You made a good effort there, but, uh, <laughs> once again, <laughs> <we've> got bored. <laughs> Words to your enemy, Rick, <laughs> and they defeated you once again. <laughs> Yes, run out of steam oh, with the sentences. Every week I think, well, I'm really gonna make an effort yeah. now, I'm gonna- I've, I've chosen some records. Yeah. That's it. That's it, that's as far as it goes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Maybe you should write out what you're gonna say at the top of the show. <laughs> <laughs> write that out. Get a nice no, big crayon. Be, I like to keep a little bit of, you know- A <laughs> little bit of something, a little bit of spark, yeah. a little bit of liveliness to it. Yeah, sure. yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. How are you? Good to, good to good. see you. Yeah, it's great, it's great to, uh- <laughs> It's great uh, to be out <laughs> of the house yeah. again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, just, um, I was gonna say, because we've been doing this, uh, for a long time now, with a little break, um, but XFM are bringing new listeners all the time. I've heard four or five a week. Really? Yeah. New wow, listeners tuning in to XFM. One Radio point one, nine. beware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, we might take it for granted the people that know who we are, know who you are, know who Carl is. Sure. Um, Oh, now, if, if, if you, you know, if you're a regular, then you know exactly who we are. But, um, for those of you who don't, uh, I say, I'm, I'm Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais, a BAFTA award-winning actor and, yeah, uh, yeah. and writer. Steve Merchant, um, all, all those. A friend of yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, this is the important thing, Carl Pilkington. Absolutely. Our, um, produ I say producer, he was the bloke who was lumbered with a job. When I said, listen, I see I used to run the desk in the old days, I was like, well, I used to press the buttons and run the desk and everything, and now I said, listen, I've been on the telly. I do not press my own buttons. And Carl said, well, I don't really work weekends. And they went, well, you do if you want to keep your job. Absolutely. And we were lumbered with him. And then we discovered that he's not just a, a little, like a little dork, a little manky sort of idiot. Sure, he's sure. got 
he's got a nice shirt. He's got, you know what I mean? He's got something else. Absolutely. He's got a he certain, brings another dimension, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, he, he started having a little chat and we discovered that he had him. quite a lot to say. Mm. Well, I, I think you're actually right. And I think, um, I was wondering, maybe we, we should maybe play another tune. But after that, I just think we should re familiarise our radio audience with yeah. Carl and any new listeners. Just get, let, you know, somehow kind of let them get to know the real Carl again. Well, if you are new, you'll, you'll find that we like some uh, old songs, some new songs, some yeah. chit chat. Uh, we get serious sometimes. There's oh, some yeah. tears and some laughter. Yeah. We kicked off with Oasis' new one, little by little. We're going to go <laughs> back in time now to Iggy Pop and his Stooges <laughs> with I'm Bored. <laughs> Iggy Pop on board on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant here. Isn't yeah, you? little Carl Pilkington. Mm. Well, w to reintroduce or introduce people for the first time to Carl, um, I think we should have a. Yeah, uh, maybe sort of a kind of a quick Q and A, Carl. And we don't need sort of lengthy answers from you. We don't need lots of detail. Um, yeah. You know, can we uh, just a couple of sentences? Just to get to answer who you are. Yeah. So right. firstly, uh, name obviously Carl Pilkington. Age, Carl? Uh, I'll be. Uh, I'll be thirty next month. Really? This month. No, next. Wh where are we? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need to ask I any more questions. Think we've done it. That's I it. I think we've Welcome done it. Welcome to the world of Carl Hilton. <laughs> I think. Oh, I thought it would take three or four I questions. I thought it was going to be least, to really yeah. explain that was, that what was Carl the first was about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely God. incredible! But well, um, but you oh. know, we can't really leave it there because um, no. because we uh, we haven't uh, got enough else to do to fill yeah. up the two hours. So um, no. let's let's pursue this line of inquiry. Yeah. Uh, so um, age? What was the age, Carl? In a couple well, of months. When were you born? I'll be uh, seventy-two. Right. What month? What day? I'm on the cusp. Uh, <laughs> you're on the cusp of a day. Well, um, twenty third of September. Okay, seventy two. So anyway, okay, right, good. And uh, you were talking there about um, obviously a star sign where you're on the cusp. Yeah. You believe in that, do you? No. Nope. You don't believe in star signs. No, not really. But you do believe in ghosts, I understand. No, because the star si Yeah, but the star Ten. sign thing. You've got how many? How many different star signs are they? Twelve, isn't it? Right, and then you've got like loads of people. Yeah. So you do the math. So they're saying that, you know, there's only 12 different sorts of people in the world. Exactly. That's yes. exactly right. It's it's made up. It's made up nonsense. It's non-science. It's pseudoscience. It's, yes. It's, 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 it's hairy man and, um, dyed hair woman science. Yes. Mm. Isn't it? All right. Yeah. Anyway, back to, uh, you, Carl. Where were you born? In, uh, in Manchester. Okay. What, uh, GCSE results did you get? <coughs> I got, uh... Was that an E? You got an E, you in, got history. An e in history. And how, how did, did you, you find out that, that information? You found out because you thought you you didn't you couldn't remember what you got. You didn't turn up, and you thought you'd done about three, one and of which I, wasn't history. And, and actually, you, and you did art. Yeah, you didn't. I'm telling you, you didn't because we checked. <laughs> yeah. You did one. You turned up for history. You did history. You got an no, E in I history. I definitely did art. I what? made a little clay man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to register for O levels. You don't just do it and then phone up and say, "I was that." Yeah. And they go, well, I'm we sending don't. you a clay man. <laughs> <sort of thing. laughs> yeah, Send me yeah. a grade. Yeah, there's all things. There's forms to fill out and yeah. things like that, Carl. Anyway, yeah. go anyway. on. Um, <laughs> who was your closest childhood friend? Closest? At what age? Well, when you were young, when you were. Oh, I remember this. It's a fella. Um, so there's, is there's, it someone there's, making? Isn't there's, it? There's, well, he wasn't really a close mate. Darren Buckley was me. Darren Buckley. Yeah, he, he was me. Tell us briefly mate. about Darren. I forgot about Darren. He's the one who. Um, <laughs> All the all the girls liked him. He had, uh, he had permed hair. He used to <laughs> have his hair like a footballer. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Were you jealous of him? His were dad you was a copper. Did you hang around with Darren like in the hope of getting maybe his kind of cast-offs? Nah. I, I, it's, it's weird with me. I, I, I wasn't that bothered about having loads of mates and that. I sort of... Sure. I had lots of mates, but I could do without them. You had a magpie, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, mate, happy, didn't I was you? happy playing with my magpie. Yeah, and what happened oh, to him? Yeah, uh, flew away. Yeah. But I wasn't bothered because it was giving me grief towards the end, wasn't it? It was, <laughs> it was popping me me grifter tyres and that. Yeah, sure. Uh, flying down, pecking me head. Sure. Now you went to school with a number of different interesting people. Uh, some, some of whom two were of which, freaks. I understand uh, had big heads and webbed toes. Is that right? Yet yeah, they were not related to each other, and they weren't friends with each other. Why weren't they friends with each other? <laughs> because that'd be obvious. <laughs> Did they, did they wear shoes or did they walk around in their, <laughs> in their web uh, Were they good at feet? swimming? Were they good at swimming? Uh, I don't know. I don't think they ever, ever went swimming. Did they ever talk, did they, did they ever look over at each other and think, Yeah, we should hang out more. <laughs> 
I told you, uh, yeah. something in the week as well, there was another cool. lad at school, had a pigeon chest. <laughs> he had a what? Can we come back to this? He had a pigeon I chest. I think we should play a record, Carl, because we- I think we've hooked them now. Yeah. I think- I think- There's no one switching off now, right? No, play a record. <laughs> Blair, coffee and TV. Carl, uh, I said it's not the best Blair song when it, when it was playing. You know, I'm not, I don't want to diss it, but you know, it's not the best one. I mean, that's, that's fact. Sure. You know, yeah. Carl went like the video though, that little milk carton. Yeah. A bit sad. It's tragic, isn't it? <laughs> he went. In the, this is all to himself. I'm not even joined in. <laughs> and then he went. Yeah, but it's all right at the end. He goes to heaven. He finds a little girl milk carton. Just lives out a little thing. And is is that like you on your paper round that little milk carton walking around like that? I imagine you. Oh, people don't know about. Uh, if you just tuned in, Carl had a paper round. It's his favourite job ever. And he maintains it's the best job he's ever had, isn't it, Carl? Wait. <laughs> Go on. I don't know what's so weird about that. It's a paper round. Yeah, but look. look <laughs> Forget it's all that. Fulfilling look at look at the way it works, right? You you get it out of the way at the start of the day, so you got the rest of the day to yourself. <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> it's the same as signing on. Your own your own boss. You know. Same as signing on. Well, you're not your own boss. The guy, yeah. the news agent's your boss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> 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 no, you, you, that's you, great. You, you've proven me wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, not really. With that stand up in court, where well, you were found with the dagger. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Was I? Okay, uh, what, when are we, uh, when are we playing the new game? Oh, Carl's got a new game. Carl's very oh, excited. Oh, just, but just, we were just talking just, about something before. Yeah, the, right, the freaks used to go. You, you had uh, people with big heads, two web feet, didn't hang around each other. That would be too obvious. Um, you had a fellow with a pigeon chest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the story with the pigeon chest? Don't know how it happened. <laughs> it was like so, it, it looked like somebody had sort of hit him on the back with a big hammer, <laughs> and it had come out at the front. Yeah, and I've never seen it since. Could that have been the answer? Well, why is why yeah, he had it? Why had it? Possibly, I suppose, in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Don't know, never asked him. It's just come back to haunt you, has it, the pigeon chest? No, it's just that, uh, you know, when you- when you mentioned about kids at school, I forgot all about him. Mm. You're talking about the kids with the web feet and the big heads. Yeah. And uh, I forgot about the little old, uh, the pigeon, chest, pigeon boy. Yeah, pigeon yeah. boy. Yeah. Well, listen, are, are you- I'm a big fan of that TV show, it's on digital TV, a lot of people won't have it, but, uh, Inside the Actors Studio with James yeah. Lipton. Yeah. And he's- he interviews lots of big Hollywood stars, and he always asks them these same questions at the end. Can I just run a few of them past you? Go on. Okay. So, um, if you could do any other profession other than the one you do now, what profession would you do? Okay, uh, can you just change that to apart from a paper round? Apart from a paper round. Oh. Can you do any other heck? profession, Carl? Um, and it doesn't matter about like. It doesn't matter if you've got the skills or anything, I in an ideal world, if you had the ability. Well, I, I think I'm about to buy somewhere, so I reckon something, you know, using, using tools and like doing a bit of plumbing and that. So a plumber? Well, sort of an all rounder. Right, right. A, a handyman. Handy handy well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You know, you don't get paid that much, but it's useful, isn't it? So but you'd get your own show, couldn't you, with Carol Smiley eventually? Well, well, all that, but the money that you don't make, you save by not having to pay someone else to do the chores. Do right, you know okay. I, mean? I, I don't know what that sentence meant. <laughs> right, right. No, a plumber. How much? How much is the average plumber on? The money you don't make, <laughs> you save on not getting someone else to do it. <laughs> no, just think of that. No, look, break that sentence down. Are there any? Sorry, Rick. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> yeah. people who live in glass Carol. houses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's just go back to Lipton quickly. We've got a couple to get through here. Sorry, so, um, your, 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 your favourite noise or sound? Uh... Favourite sound or noise? Oh, Is it me? No. It's not uh, me? Hang on a minute. It's not me! Are you sure it's not me, Carl? I like, I like Elvis. Noise. Elvis. Uh, Elvis. In the, in the ghetto. The sound of Elvis. Uh, Elvis in the ghetto. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah. And your least favourite noise or sound? I, I don't think it should really be records and music. Noises. Things that you hear. Uh, at home or whatever. Maybe like a sound of a the least favourite noise. Least favourite. The sound of probably like uh, the sound of ghosts. Fire engines and that. <laughs> right. That's that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Except if your house was on fire, presumably. <laughs> I think it's a bit unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> you think oh. they're just doing it to wind people up? I live on like a busy street and it's happening all the time and it's, yeah. it is like, just sort of have a blast of it and people will hear it. You sure. don't have to keep it going. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So that, that is, yeah, okay. pretty annoying. And um, uh, if heaven exists, Carl, when you get to the pearly gates, what would you like God to say to you as he welcomes you into heaven? What would you like God to say to you? Uh, who asks these? It, it, what, what shows this? It's a program where um, celebrities are interviewed by a guy, uh, an American interviewer, and he always asks these questions at the very end. 
What would I say to God? What would you say to God when, if, if you believed in heaven and if heaven exists, when you eventually go up to heaven and you're welcomed in through uh, the gates and by God, what, in your stussy t-shirt and yeah. <laughs> what do you want God to say to you as he welcomes you in? Say, uh, you alright? Uh, I don't know, just be, just be friendly. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, nice stuff. Um, it's a kind of Scottish super group. Lots of different artists from uh, Scottish Sebastian, bands. Ben Sebastian. Ben Sebastian. Is uh, it a singer uh, from them? Uh, it may well be, yeah, on that particular track. Different people, Mole Historical Society, Ida Wild, Teenage Fan Club, different people from all those bands. Get together with a guy called uh, Gary Lightbody from Snow Patrol and he uh, writes and the And all tunes. that on XFM 104.9, Steve. Absolutely. Uh, let me just name that track. That track was Grand Parade from their current album, uh, Son of Evil Reindeer. <laughs> Feeder. Come back around on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. Uh, but who are you? <laughs> oh, thanks for asking, Rick. Steve Merchant. Uh, with us, Carl Pilgerton. Well, Carl, um, now I know I shouldn't, uh, but I met Carl in the week against I, I Steve. I told you you shouldn't do I this, know. you know. But then when the he weekend. starts, he starts saying things like, oh, is this loud with the people? I go, no, save it, save it, and we just sit there, I'm scared to talk in case he comes up. But, um, you did tell me a couple of little things, didn't you? True stories that, you know, that, that I mean, I enjoy. Right. Could you tell, um, Steve about the doctor? Right. Oh God. Um. What's what, where, is this something that happened to a friend of yours, or is this? Uh... No, no. I read about it. You read about it. Okay. Um. There's this little lad. Right. <laughs> okay. First of all, it's it's years ago, right? When right, they didn't have, they didn't have decent doctors in like every town and that. Yeah. And uh, this little kid is dead ill, right? Yeah. And the local doctor. <laughs> Well, there's a phone call involved, so I don't yeah, really get the impression get it. that it's like medieval, medieval times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but I, I didn't say that, I just said it's years ago. Go on so on. this kid's ill, right? Yeah. And he's, uh, he's lying in the bed, and uh, he's, he's all like, all going funny colour and that. Yeah. And, uh, and his mum says, I'm gonna get the local doctor around. The local doctor comes around, and uh, he says, oh, so I don't know, I don't know what's up with him. He said, um, to leave it with me. Leave it with me. He said, uh, said that. I'll have a, yeah. He said I'll um, I'll I'll phone up uh, a top doctor. Okay. Who was in America or somewhere like that. Yeah. And uh, so he goes to the phone in his office and he calls America and because it's years ago the phone line isn't that good it's all crackly and that. Right. Yeah. So he's talking to the doctor and he's saying I've got this kid. He's a funny colour and. Uh, you know, he's it, it, really weak and that. I don't yeah. know he's not him. giving him much to go on. <laughs> right? <laughs> sure. So, uh, so the American doctor, right? Yeah. He goes, yeah, what do you want to do? And it's all breaking up, right? Yeah. He goes, what you gotta do? You gotta, uh, <laughs> it's all breaking up. You gotta give him some, uh, parrot's blood, right? Some parrot's blood? Well, that's what he thought he said, but the line was really bad. Yeah. He meant parents' blood, but he, he heard that he said parrots' blood. He oh said, "Right, I'll, I'll I'll do that. Leave I, it with me." I can see where this is going. He goes, he goes to uh, you know a pet shop. Yeah. <laughs> he says, "Give us like half a dozen parrots." Sure. Takes them round to the kid's house. Takes the blood from the parrots. Puts it into the kid. Kid's fine. The kid's fine. <laughs> I never. It, it worked. <laughs> Such a load of shite. <laughs> My life. I've never heard such twaddle, such just made up, enhanced, exaggerated. Oh, in my a load life. of old rubbish. I Carl. mean, when he told me this, he said the doctor said, "What do I do?" And the doctor on the other end said, "Give him some blood." And the doctor went, "Where do I get blood from?" <laughs> so hang on, wait. Give, I just need to. I give, just need where to do I get blood from? From his give him some parents' blood. Give him some parents' blood. <laughs> Give him some parents, some some parents' blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> But hang on, I just need to know where you Sorry, read this. Carl. Where was this? Where did I you read stitched this? you up. You know when he said, he said, so do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. He went, do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. Carl, but where did was you read it? That, that was on the internet. <laughs> What, where about is illnesses. it on the internet? Where, I'm what, always what looking at stuff. I was looking at stuff this morning because of um, because <laughs> of Yora Geller last night. <laughs> Eating, uh, eating all that funny food and that, and also, uh, they all got a bit scared last night, didn't they, with a, with a snake. Hmm. I didn't see that. Is this, um, I'm a celebrity getting me out of Yeah, it? yeah, he got all worried about a snake getting on the, uh, sort of wandering about in between the sleeping bags and stuff. Yeah. And, um, 
They were all scared, and it is so Leave easy. it with me! Sorry, the doctor says, leave it with me. Um, <laughs> yeah! Ah, uh, leave it with me! Well, they were all scared, because there's a snake, and it's so easy to find stuff out. Before they- before they- where are they? Where is this jungle? <laughs> Australia, right. I think. Before they went, give it half an hour on the internet, <laughs> I found out with snakes, you don't need to worry, okay. right? Um, they're deaf, they haven't got any ears. Right. So as long as you, you're really quiet, Creep it'll, around, it'll yeah. probably leave you alone. Yep. And also they don't have eyelids. Uh-huh. Um, so they were suggesting if one's coming towards you, just, like, kick sand in its eyes. <laughs> yeah. It can't blink and it leaves it a bit, like, annoyed yeah. and it wanders off. But they didn't uh, do any research before they went. Yeah. And that's, that, you're, you're, I think your knowledge would hold you in good stead. I don't think you need to know any more than you know. Um, well, we're going to come back to that because he also explained to me where um, uh, a saying comes from that I want to, you to be part of. But um, oh, and also we should mention as well, Carl, you've come up with a, a competition. Is this right? Brilliant competition. You, have you, have he, you thinks this, this up? he thinks yeah. this can go to television. Is this an idea you've come up with? Yeah. Carl, I'm so looking forward to so, it. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, continuing uh, our exposure of myths and and legends of Rockful Tale, we expose that myth that some maybe older rockers have, have had it and they've gotten that they they were never any good. And the yeah. kids today, oh, I don't want we to hear want that. people like Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart is a great artist. This uh, he's a slightly laughable man, but a great artist. Let's go back to when it was when he was rocking. When he cut the mustard. Yeah. yeah. Rod Stewart, you wear it well. Great tune. On XFM 104.9. Yeah. This doctor, I mean, we <laughs> should find out who he is, really, and if he's still practicing, because it, it worries me a little bit that he, you know, mm -hmm. he did that. Also, I mean, he thinks he's got away with it, but how could he be sure those parrots wouldn't talk? True. True. Do you know yeah, what I mean? There yeah, are six yeah. of them. They probably got together and they, pro they probably put it on the internet. I mean, it. I, I feel that that story, Carl, it, it asks more questions than it answers. <laughs> yeah! Really. Like most of your stories. Yeah, that's the problem. I always, feel them, I always feel like I need a little bit more information. Like, yeah. did the parrot boy continue to live? <laughs> yeah. You know, to a ripe old age, or did he die yeah. weeks later after this charlatan doctor who was yeah. going around, you know, spurious and Did he break right. his nose trying to crack a big nut? Mm. No, I, th I think he's, uh, he was alright. He, he lived to a. See, I'd have shouted, if I was that doctor, I'd have shouted, Back down the phone. Are you sure you said parrot's blood? Yeah. You parrot's sure it was parrot's blood? No, listen, I, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not the best doctor in the world, but d d did you say parrot's blood? <laughs> yeah, but what you're forgetting is you're going back to the time where, like, they used leeches to do, like, no, 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 we're going back to the late 70s <laughs> if there's a phone call to America direct. <laughs> Come on, Carl. They weren't calling America, like, in the medieval times or, or in the Victorian age. Come on, think about it, Carl. Yeah. You know, it's, this has got to be like the, the like, you know, 30s or 40s, <laughs> the earliest. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> I'm intrigued to know where this. I think there's someone on the on the web who's just putting information on there to lead you astray. Yeah, I don't because you're the only person who finds this stuff. Other people are using this to write. What were you looking up that then? What were you? What were you looking? Always, I always look up f weird stuff. What were you yeah. looking for? But what do you type in the search engine to find parrot blood stories? What were you looking for? Why, there was what? this woman with a weird head. <laughs> Why were you looking for that? What were you? Just because I'd heard about it. I'd heard like someone talking about it on another station. Right. right. About this woman with a with a funny head. Right. <laughs> I love the fact I love the fact you're intrigued with these things. You go in the basement of Waterstones or Dylan's or somewhere and there's these there's these medical books that you're loving, mate. Yeah, well this is free on the internet, isn't it? It's all there. Yeah. So what do you type in weird head woman or <laughs> <laughs> Lady with head <laughs> yeah. Weird 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 people or something I put in. Sure. Yeah. Did you, did you come up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> 7,000 uh, hits, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all there, isn't it? It's interesting. The one that I was telling you before about, um, the, what's the name? The, the lost letter. The lost letter? What's the lost, this? uh, lost postcard that's, uh, just turned up. Some yeah. woman, uh, sent a postcard years and years ago to, to a niece or something, right? Yeah. And, and her niece was, like, three years old sure. back then. And just now, like, I think, like, Yesterday or the day before, it turned up. The postcard turned up seventy-four years late. <laughs> seventy-four years late. It took seventy-four years. And that three-year-old girl's been living in the same house that whole time. <laughs> well, that yeah. Sure. 
There's no way <laughs> to ask. Mean, there's always a question you can ask <laughs> to just scratch the credibility of these stories. Yeah. There's always- it's like the apocryphal tale. Was this the is slugs? It, was this those slugs from last week? Yeah, well, they were holding back because they're slow because the postman slug is useless. His round takes him 74 years. Then he's got to go back to the beginning he's got 74 years and they can't carry the bag. But, that's where they go- that's where they turn to glue. That's where they turn to glue. Oh. It's pitiful. It is pitiful. So you, so you don't believe that someone sent a postcard years ago <gasps> and somehow it's been stuck in the bottom of a post bag or something and it's only just- Stuck in the bottom of a post bag? Yeah. That means that there's like an, a 95 year old postman who's still yeah. wandering around. Did, 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 did you did you have to pay like the, the difference and the charges? Uh, Cause presumably th it was- It wouldn't have had Queen Elizabeth's uh, It was, it it was wrong, a penny black, it? presumably was it? Yeah. <laughs> what would be on the stamp? It would have been invalid, surely. <laughs> I don't know. See, these are the what? questions no, you should no, ask no, no, yourself. Because no, no. if it's the postman's fault, the post no, office can't turn around. He was three at the time himself, wasn't he? He was dead. No, he is dead. Yeah, he'll yeah. be well and truly dead now. Yeah. But the fact is that the post office made an error, <laughs> right? They lost this letter. Sure. Mm. It's only just turned up. They can't turn around and say, sorry about this. I hope it isn't urgent. Um, <laughs> it, it, He's turned up 74 years late, and by the way, you owe us 25 pence. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. wouldn't do that, would no, they? No, that's so, true, that's true. So that's true. You and you're asking vote. questions, though, you see? That's, that's true, you see? So, to, um, you're interested in that where sayings come from as well, aren't you? Because yeah. you, you told me one of the week, what that, I don't know if Steve's aware of that. Do you want to tell Steve this one? What's this a saying? Can we do this quiz? D do, do this we'll first. do the quiz later. I know you're excited about the quiz. Let's do that later, but what's this saying? Right, uh, what is the saying? Chucking a baby out with the bathwater? Yeah. Do you have, you that? Heard that, have you heard that phrase? Uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Well, yeah. 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 Right, wh wh how would you use that? Well, um, how would I use that? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I suppose if you've, maybe you've been discussing something, you've come up with some plans, but you're slightly worried and, um, you know, you might abandon the whole plan, whereas there might be some ideas in there which are still worth retaining. Exactly. So you don't want to throw the baby out with the, the bathwater. bathwater. There might right. be some that you can just change yeah. and you don't want yeah. to, yeah. A similar, you know, there might be a few ideas you can salvage from an, an otherwise worthless one. Well, the saying, right, comes from, like, years ago again. Mm -hmm. And um pre or post phone. <laughs> and uh <laughs> ages and ages ago when like you know the bloke worked in the house, you know, he was like the coal man. And then you have like <laughs> No way, it's important. Then then like the mum is like uh you know, she stays at home making the dinner, looking after the kids. Yep. yep. And uh and then you've got like the little kid who's just growing up, just messing about and stuff. So what happens is back then they didn't have like fresh flowing warm water every day. Mm. So all they could do, they could only afford to have like um, one one full big bath of fresh water. So they'd fill up the bath, right? And then the dad would come home and he'd say, "Oh, I've had a right, you know, I had a tough day at work and that down the pit." And uh, his wife would say, "It's all right. I'm putting the dinner on. You're gonna have a nice warm bath." So because yeah. he because he, he gets to bath first. Because he, he gets to bath first because he's the grafter and he's right? covered in coal. He's covered yeah. in coal, so the water's like minging by the time he's finished. Yeah. Right. And then the wife says, "Oh, after all my uh, cleaning the house and doing the cooking, I'm a bit sweaty now." She's covered in dust and yeah. grime. She I'll, has the next I'll, one. I'll have a bath. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the line, there's a little baby. Yeah, yeah. It's been playing out all day. Also got like little uh, little grubby knees and stuff. Needs to have a bath. <coughs> yeah. He goes in the bath. Right? But because the water's so dirty... Sure. They go and empty the water out of the window, can't see the baby in it. <laughs> Chucking the baby out with the bath water. That's where it, that's where it comes from. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Steve. Because <laughs> I heard this, I just, I'm just, I'm just... <laughs> what do you think, Steve? Steve. So... <laughs> so firstly, that, that, that sort of, I mean... Oh. That doesn't explain when why- When you start, you're well, struggling, aren't you? You're struggling where to start. Well, firstly, I can't see how we've now applied this to, I've you know, been the thinking of this. I've, I've been thinking of this for days, Steve, waiting for you to I hear mean, this one. these coal mining parents yeah. deeply negligent. Yeah. I, I love They've the left their baby because, in the bath, because unattended. It, that's the way around to do it. The one covered in coal- Yeah. You go first. first. Sure. You go first. Don't wash the baby and then get in that. Yeah. You, you, one covered in coal goes first. Yeah. That's the best idea. Yeah. Second most dirty one goes second, yeah. and then the clean little baby. Yeah. I think I think we should do him last because yeah. he's he's done nothing but, towards no, this family. But, but more than that, Rick, leave him to his own devices. Yeah. Jack, I'm just going to throw the water out. Yeah. In the bath. Don't check have you, first. Have you checked that the baby's not in there? No, I'm not Don't even going to waste my time You'd checking. You'd see it. You'd see it. I'd be able to see You'd a baby. You'd see a baby in if there. If a baby was in here, yeah. I'd be able to see it. I'm yeah. just going to throw it out. Yeah, I'm not even going to look, to be honest, Jack. Not We've all even had our bath. Yeah. If the baby's in there, yeah. then it should be, be making itself Jack. We have lost three children this <laughs> way. <laughs> Don't worry. Where did you read that?
single from Supergrass, Grace on XFM 104.9. Coming up in the next hour, Carl Pilkington's new game show. He's very excited about I'm this. I'm excited. I'm excited. We don't I know anything wait. about it, but it's but gonna he's, be dynamite. he's told me it's gonna be a winner. He's, you know, he said it's gonna go to television. Sure. Uh, I need some adverts, though. Oh, I'd love to hear some adverts. Can we have just two or three minutes of adverts, please? <laughs> please. <laughs> Vines there, Steve, on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl's getting very excited, as we all are, about his new... Should we, should we let him do a little taster for us? Well, I'm very excited about it, I mean... So, well, so the gist of it, what is it? What is it, exactly? Right. Is it a game show or is it a competition? It's just, um, just so it's something that, you know, you can play and also people at home, uh, can take part in it. Now, would they phone in about this or they can just play at home while they're listening? They can just play at home. Okay. Um, you mean we haven't got any prizes? No, there isn't. No, I, I think we, we, could, we could get in the phone in, maybe. Well, I don't know. Let's hear the game idea yeah. first. Yeah. Right, it's, it's music related. Okay. Good. And, um, what I do is, I sort of, uh, tell a little story. Okay. And that story makes up a song title. Alright. Well, it All sounds right. ambitious. So, um... Is it a cryptic clue? Uh, could be. <laughs> uh, say, say like this, right? <laughs> oh, dearie me. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> say like this. Right. This, this woman, right, she's pregnant. Do you know the answer to this one, so don't be saying anything. This okay. is just aimed at Steve. Okay. Right. This woman has a baby. Yeah. She's pregnant, has a baby. And the doctor's there in the, uh, in the hospital going, oh, yeah, you've got a, got a lovely little baby oh, here. you told me that this is... Oh, this guy. Got a lovely little oh, baby. God. Um, it's just coming out now. You'll be able to see it in a minute. And, uh, it's like covered in gunk and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, he's going, yeah, it's nearly here. It's coming out. I see, you see it's a little head and that. And, um, he gets hold of it and it's full of all this gunk, right? The baby's full of gunk. Yeah, yeah like the other. Covered in gunk or full of gunk? Covered in it. Right. And he goes, uh, here you go. Get hold of your baby. And he drops it. <laughs> Right. What, what song's that? There's so much irrelevance there, Steve. I can't tell you. It's not a cryptic clue. It's not a cryptic clue. Because only... Uh, I mean, the gist of it is that, relevant. That isn't the best one. That's just... Right. I mean, there is just... There's there's things there that you're tr 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 dwelling on and thinking of pun. Don't. Just go for gut instinct. What was it? What was that? Right, let me just... I just need to try and get the basics of this. There's a woman, she's pregnant, she has a baby. Yeah. The baby's covered in gunk. Yeah. Right. And because of the gunk, the doctor drops the baby. Yeah. And that's all I need to know. Yeah, that is all you need to know. Yeah, the um, pregnancy is largely irrelevant. <laughs> okay, what it's, are the what are the, the key elements? It's the birth and the doctor dropping it that the irrelevant. The, the, the irrelevant birth thing. and the dropping of the baby. Yeah. Uh, I've n I've absolutely no idea. I can't okay. even begin no, think, to guess. Think about what's happened. Oh, Carl, She's had a baby. The doctor's trying to deliver it. He's saying it's a nice little baby you've got here. This is all irrelevant. <laughs> this is all irrelevant. <laughs> right, let me tell you this. So, so just to be fair to Steve, so he gets he can get into your mind. Right, this is not a traditional cryptic clue, <laughs> okay. logical problem. Or this is this is Carl. What song am I thinking of? Right, <laughs> right. that is Underworld. Born Slippy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, actually, that makes textbook sense. Yeah. No, that does yeah. actually. No, do I'm like sorry. The, do you like all the story about the big <laughs> thing going so You can see it in them, and it always is covered in gunk. Yeah. No, I agree there is some extraneous detail. Yeah, but I okay. have to say, yeah. that. Born was good, because it was. That, that's what. That's the look of it. Was yeah. Born was good, yeah. And <laughs> Born Slippy. I. Uh, no, I'm actually, I was quite impressed by that, Carl, I have to say. No, to be fair to you, I'm not just patronising you. Oh, well, I've got, oh, um, wow. I actually think that was really good, and I, I, I disrespect Ricky Gervais for standing okay, off, because okay. I actually think that that was quite well, good. Well, let's go ahead with it, then. I, I, <laughs> on your I feel we could, we could maybe open this up to, uh, to email correspondence, or, okay, uh, or the phone Okay, let's go lines. for it, then. Okay, this is Carl Pilkington's <laughs> new game show idea. It's what, it's, it's, uh, it's just what's the song? <laughs> well, it, <laughs> Carl Pilkington presents What's the Song? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Okay, well, what's the song? Well, let's, I'll tell you what, let's play a record. Let's, let's come well, back after Give out the number if ready for him. Well, uh, if you should make a note of this, uh, you can email us. The email's up and running. ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Uh, what's the phone number, Carl? It's 08700 800 1234. Okay. 08700 800 one, two, three, four. Make a note of that and we'll, uh, we'll have a game of, uh, what song is Carl thinking of after this next track? What do you want to play? What um, have you got lined up there? Oh, oh, continuing, uh, again, I've, uh, uh, old fogies who were good once and I Absolutely. won't hear a thing said against the new kids <laughs> yeah. out there. It's not old new metal, is it? True enough. This is, uh, Cat Stevens, uh, a little known album, Mona Bone Jack On, and this one's called Trouble. It's a lovely song. <laughs> 